um, hi everyone. Welcome to our webinar, uh, Preparing Your Restaurant for the Holidays. My name is Brittany Minoff. I'm the Communications Manager here at the NYC Hospitality Alliance. Um, so I can't believe it is almost that time getting ready for the holiday season, which is just crazy what a year it has been. So with that, we have some folks from Bento Box here to provide you with some insight on maximizing your revenue and streamlining your holiday operations. So in case you aren't familiar, Bento Box team, they're here, they're experts at all things restaurant design creation, online ordering, and much more. They're awesome. So if you have any questions throughout the webinar, feel free to use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen, and we should have time at the end to answer some questions. So um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Caitlin Johnson and Maya Goldstein, both Bento Box partners, they will be running today's webinar. So Caitlin, Maya, I will give you guys the virtual floor. Thanks. Thank you so much, Brittany. Hi everyone, we really look forward to speaking with you today. Um, we have a couple of topics to run through, talking about, as Brittany mentioned, you know, really increasing revenue, getting ready for the holidays. Um, we're gonna touch on online ordering, some gift cards and other immediate upfront revenue, selling things like merchandise and holiday event tickets, and then using guest data that you receive to leverage it and drive revenue. Um, so just to give you guys a heads up in case you don't know about Bento Box. So we're a marketing and commerce platform and we're focused on working just with the hospitality industry. So we have over 7,000 restaurants that trust us, but I think what's probably most important is that 900 and more are actually located in New York City. So, you know, when it comes to talking about recommendations for restaurants and, you know, kind of knowing firsthand what's working, what isn't working and helping you guys find success, especially during the holidays, you know, we're, we're pretty good advisors, I'd like to think. Um, our customers agree we have a 98% retention rate. Um, so we're really excited to be able to talk to you guys today. So obviously it's holiday season. I know Brittany said the same thing I think we're all kind of feeling is how did this happen so fast already. Um, I saw someone said online that September went by at normal pace, but October is rushing by at, you know, 90 miles per hour in a 35. And I'm definitely feeling that myself. So what we want to think about is what we can do to make sure that your restaurant is bringing in the most revenue possible during this time. You know, 2020 and 2021 have been tough on this industry, but now that numbers are dropping down, restaurants are coming back somewhere close to normal, guests are getting more excited to celebrate, more in lines with what times were in 2019 and before. And we wanna help you to get in touch with your customers, help your customers get in touch with you and make sure that you're finishing out the revenue for 2021 strong. So the first thing I want to talk about is catering. So, you know, you think holidays, your mind probably goes right to catering. The way that we like to think about it is that there's kind of two different types of catering. I'm sure, you know, if we really broke it down, there's more than that. But if you're thinking about it, we have, you know, special event catering and we have large group orders. So sometimes there's a crossover in that Venn diagram, but really we're thinking about two different types of catering there. With our special events catering, that's going to be a, you know, a tailored event where someone wants to check every detail, you know, really go back and forth, maybe discuss with your catering manager, you know, the particulars of an event to make sure that every detail is perfect. And then there's the large group order catering. You know, years ago, I was an office assistant. I'm sure, you know, some of you have been in this role in your life in, in some capacity, but my job was to order group lunches every single week. And the one thing that I wanted is to make sure that when I was doing that, I could do it as quickly as possible. So we're coming back into the holiday season. People are going back into the office. People are throwing parties because it's safe to do so. And we're gonna see a large influx in those big group orders. So we wanna make sure that you're taking advantage of this opportunity 
to put together large orders and be able to do so that's easy for your customers that may not require that full consultative approach. From our perspective and for the restaurants that we work with, we're seeing on average over $3,100 in monthly revenue coming just from catering. But even more importantly, we're seeing three times the amount of catering revenue for our customers coming in during the holidays and 221% more revenue coming in in December alone. So we do have some ideas of how you can implement this into your restaurant. Schedule seasonal menus well in advance. This can help you save time. This can help your customers understand that you'll be able to be the go-to solution for when they're planning their party or they're planning their holiday menu. I think we've all spent, you know, I can speak from my personal experience. I've spent enough time cooking for myself that I, I don't think I've eaten out more in my life than I have, you know, in the past couple of months. You can promote your top selling items with special promo codes. So a good thing about that is making sure that people know if they're not as familiar with your menu, what everyone likes to order, what you're known for. You can track purchases that people are, are making and be able to send them rewards to drive repeat pre-order. So thinking about something like that, if you have you know, people who are placing orders for the end of the year and they, they, put, they pay for the order in advance, being able to reward them before you've even fulfilled it. It's just an idea to, to put in your head to kind of build that customer loyalty. Another great idea, you know, put together some sort of Thanksgiving uh, or Friendsgiving meal kit. So a lot of people put together these potluck events where everyone brings a dish. Not everyone is, you know, well prepared to make something that other people would want to eat. And I think making it easy for them to either put something together or even order something to pick up, maybe a dessert can, can make an event truly special. You know, thinking about just managing your catering orders, you know, finding a way to download and batch print PDFs for your kitchen so you know what to prep, you know when to prep, you know what ingredients you need as far in advance as you need in order to fulfill the orders. So, you know, kind of thinking about it as far as gone are the days of, you know, taking a catering order, you know, on the phone because someone really, really wants it and then hoping that you have everything day of planned out so that it goes off without a hitch. So streamlining your process so that you're able to fulfill more orders and able to satisfy more of your customers and get them coming back. And also thinking about making sure that, you know, any catering that you're offering has food photos, you know, menus that come to life, they always say people eat with their eyes. These menus are the ones that people are going to order from. They'll say, this is what my event's going to look like. They'll be able to imagine it, picture it, start to taste it. And it makes for a really exciting experience for diners. And I think it makes an exciting experience for restaurant owners as well, who are proud of, you know, the work that they do every day. On to online ordering, something very similar, but on a smaller scale. Um, so we know that diners have their favorite restaurants and they want to support them moving forward it's with the temperatures dropping. Um, yes, you'll have some customers that are going to come to you, sit in those heaters that you have. Um, but we found that the majority of the customers are really planning on doing takeout or delivery, you know, with the holiday season coming up, um, and lots of articles out and whatnot, but customers really do want to order directly through you rather than a third party. Um, and so we found that there is a significant increase of orders going through directly rather than a third party. Um, and so with the season coming up, you wanna make sure you're set up for success here. Um, so with direct online ordering, you have the opportunity to collect these orders without giving out a high commission per percentage of it. Um, you have the opportunity to collect that guest data and utilize it to push out any marketing materials that will re-engage with your customers and incentivize them to move forward with those direct orders for you. And with that, it will tie into customer loyalty, kind of rewards the way Caitlin was mentioning it. Um, and, you know, you don't, you want to make it easy for them. You want to make it intuitive for them. So no need to create a login with a password that you don't remember um, and have the ability to track your orders and have expectations of when it will be there and how it will be there. Yeah, I think one of the most frustrating things can be 
you know, trying, having to run around trying to find your credit card or, you know, going to a different tab and losing the original menu and, and having a process where someone can order from their phone really quickly and, you know, complete checkout probably in less than 30 seconds is super important for that retention. You know, when, as soon as somebody gets distracted and taken off the page, you know, the chances that they would actually complete the order, whether it's because they put their phone down or they found something else, you know, I think it goes slim to none. So making it as, as streamlined as, as possible. So we're talking about the holidays. Naturally, we're going to talk about super important revenue generator gift cards. Um, so you might be, um, you might be selling gift cards at your restaurant right now, maybe physical gift cards. It's super important that you do so. Why? Because this is a great way to get upfront revenue. Um, so we see with our customers five times the gift card sales around the holidays. In that, obviously, you know, big holidays, big gift giving holidays are in December. That's where we're seeing a huge jump, 326% more gift cards sold in December, which is right around the corner. And the average gift card amount is $100. So what's most important about this is that 18% of gift cards we've found are never redeemed at all. So that's money that you'll get up front that doesn't come out of your pocket later on, doesn't, doesn't have to go into, is just straight profit for you from the gift cards. Beyond that, 68% of diners spend more than the value of the gift card. So I think about myself, you know, any, anytime I have a gift card to a restaurant, I don't sit and do the math on my napkin and, and try to make sure that I'm under that $100 gift card amount. I'm using that extra $100 to upgrade something about my meal. So either I'm going to get dessert or I'm going to get, you know, a really nice bottle of wine instead of, you know, the second least expensive or whatever it is. But thinking about that in terms of it's exciting for diners and it's also a great way for your current customers to continue to help promote your restaurant. You know, every time someone gives a gift card, whether it's to someone's favorite restaurant or from someone whose favorite restaurant it is to someone who might have never tried it before, this is a way to get new diners in the door. What's really important is that you sell both digital and physical gift cards. So physical gift cards, you can have available in your location so people can purchase it and be able to put it in a card day of a holiday, but not everyone lives near each other. And maybe, you know, a relative wants to buy you something special for, you know, Hanukkah in New York. They might send a digital gift card to your favorite restaurant. So now you have a place to go for dinner that night. So a digital gift card where you can purchase it online, super important right now to be able to connect with the diners that haven't been able to make it in, but might still want to both support the restaurant and help spread the word about the restaurant. Some other things that you can consider doing is offer incentives to sell more gift cards, whether that's a discount for volume or something special. If, if someone buys a gift card, maybe they can get something small themselves as a, like a bonus gift card. You can use digital gift cards with your direct online ordering and then have special promo codes that are attached as well. And then think about as another reason why you wanna reach out to your customers. If you start offering gift cards, now you have something that you're marketing to them. So you know, beyond just talking about your delicious food, you're also gonna be talking about what you're offering now and being able to, especially if it's a digital gift card, give them an easy link in order to support your restaurant and buy a gift for one of their loved ones. Speaking of gifts, this is one of my favorite aspects of a gift to both receive and give, um, merchandise. Um, there is a huge, huge, huge foodie movement going on right now. And people really love representing the restaurants they love or had a great experience at. And not only is that money coming into your pockets and, you know, having them walk around with, with what they purchase, but it's free marketing for you. Um, people are going to see that they're wearing it, whether they're posting it on social media or they're just walking in the streets and that gets your name out there. Um, it's a really great way to connect with your customers and maybe they had a great meal, but they got to run out. Having that offered online and being able to purchase that as a gift or for themselves online is a really, really great way to get that out. Um, and talking about holiday events, 
there is an opportunity to sell tickets for these events that you offer. Um, of course, with the holidays coming up, it's the busiest time for these events. And we probably don't have to tell you there's a lot of excitement in the air to get dressed up and go out and celebrate for these events. But having the ability to collect that information and um, being able to track who's coming, getting a good head count and kind of having organization and control there of how to do it is really, really, really important. Um, so some certain ideas, um, you can sell t-shirts, mugs, or cookbooks as these gifts. You can set promo codes for these for during the holidays. And then when you are getting these event inquiries, um, you're able to capture them from the website and you can host, whether it be virtual, if that's how things might be in the winter, or if it's on premise, you have the opportunity to um, kind of market that out there and then have it hosted and gather that upfront revenue there. So let's take a look at a case study. So one of our clients, Bubby's, is a great success story of the power of a merch store. So prior to working with Bento Box, Bubby's was, you know, doing everything manually. So someone would want to place an order there. You know, Bubby's, if you're not familiar, really known for their homemade pies. So prior to that, people would call and by phone, they take a manual order, take down the customer information, take down the credit card information, and you know, put the order into their into the system that they had started working with Bento Box. They were able to not only expand their store to more than just pies, but being able to offer merchandise, you know, uh, mixes, the pies themselves, T-shirts, and other and other merchandise um, as well. On average, they saved about ten minutes per order, and breaking that down into some real numbers. And this is a New York City. This is a New York City establishment. You know, they made $90,000 in merch sales in 30 days. So this gives them the ability to not have their staff taken, uh, having their time taken up, trying to take these orders down, but they're able to get those orders placed, processed, and have people be able to do this 24 hours a day. You know, nothing would be worse than someone who has an idea to send a homemade pie, no way to order it, even from your restaurant, because it's a time when it's not open, and then they forget about that idea and end up going with something else. One thing I also want to mention is right now, Bubby's actual website. So, you know, later on when you're off the, the webinar, if you have a couple minutes, you can take a look. They actually have a Thanksgiving ticketed event. It's a really good example of a, you know, a home cooked meal that they're putting together and selling tickets for, as well as Thanksgiving boxes. So being able to, you know, give people the opportunity to experience a Thanksgiving dinner or let people, you know, help them create that a memorable Thanksgiving at their own home. Oops, I'm muted. muted. Um, back to a little bit of what I was speaking to before with this guest data. Um, we were talking about direct online ordering and you know, you'll have diners who visit your website and order directly from you because they're interested in your food and concept. But what you do need is tools to help keep your concept top of mind. There's saturated restaurants where we are in New York City. Um, and so what are you gonna do when they're trying to plan their next meal? Um, or maybe they are hungry and they don't know what they want for dinner. So having this guest data, during the holidays and without the holidays, um, you'll be able to track what people are ordering, which will gives you, give you a lot of insight into which promos are being used, um, how many people are opening these marketing emails, how many people are moving forward, which promotion. And so that way you can use that for future reference when you do wanna change things up. Um, and this is a really great opportunity for acquisition as well. Um, so thinking about guest data, you know, something that I always think about, you know, is where are you getting your guest data from? So you probably, if you have a website already, or if you have, you know, people that are writing down on those physical cards that are inside of your restaurant that, you know, ask for an email address and maybe someone's importing it into a system. I know personally, I've written my email down and then I'm on a, you know, a newsletter now for my favorite restaurant, which is really exciting because then I find out about the events but kind of spending that time to build a loyalty keeps you, like Maya said, top of mind with your diner. So these people already love you, but 
you know, like all of us, we're being pulled in a million different directions sometimes, and we have to stay in front of our guests in order to, um, to in order to reach them sometimes. So thinking about that, you know, being able to send them promotions because they're your, your loyal customers, and it shows them that you recognize that they've been loyal to you and you're going to be loyal to them. You know, you can use that for special offers um, and then in other promos. But even most importantly, you know, we talked about a lot today, a lot of ideas of how to, you know, prepare your restaurant for the holidays. And, you know, whether you are starting to think about maybe I want to do catering or, you know, I have merch that I would love to get online or maybe I could do a ticketed New Year's Eve dinner, anything like that, you know, thinking about who would want to come to that event, it, first and foremost, it's going to be your loyal customers. So making sure that you're leveraging that data to be able to tell them about, you know, what's new at the restaurant, what's going on. You know, you, I would be ex so ecstatic if, if the restaurants that I love sent me emails all the time, letting me know that they were about to make, you know, my plans for Christmas Eve dinner a little bit less chaotic or that they were doing a promotion for a gift card that's gonna, you know, save me money in the long run and allow me to go to the restaurant. So thinking about that, you know, I actually was speaking to one of our clients and they pointed out something to me. So, you know, we're in New York City where if you're doing online ordering now, you're probably getting, you know, 200, maybe more, maybe less orders per day that are coming through through whatever channel that you have right now. Direct online ordering, where you're able to capture that guest data, even if you got five unique orders per day, so it wasn't people that you already had in your system, that's 35 emails that are being added to your email list every single week. So imagine that building up over time where suddenly, you know, your email chain that has 200 people is gonna have a thousand and then 2000. And then that just is going to create more guests coming into the restaurant, more guests ordering from you, whether it's through online ordering or catering and more guests talking about you and getting excited to help you build your brand. It's great. I think that we covered, all, you know, a lot of important information. We all know in this industry, it's really crucial to be 10 steps ahead. And so right now we're at this opportunity where we can implement these tools that are going to set yourself up for the holidays and, you know, anytime after that. Um, but we, I, I'm really excited to hear some questions you may have. I know we covered a lot of information. Um, and Caitlin, to the next slide, please. We can go ahead and take any questions you may have that come to mind. Um, great, I've got a question here. It says, any advice for restaurants who are short staffed, especially around the holidays? It's a great question. Um, yeah, thinking about that, you know, I know we're, we're talking about technology and you have, you're thinking about, you know, oh, I would love to do something like this. I would love to expand, but I don't have the time because I am short staffed. Thinking about these tools is almost like having an additional employee. So something like this, where if you have a catering store, as opposed to taking manual catering orders or not taking catering orders at all, this is now someone who's organizing the information for you, who's, you know, letting you know what's being ordered and when it needs to be done. So, you know, it can help you streamline your process. So even though you don't have that, those extra employees, you'll be able to still serve your customers and still expand your business. Let's see. I think we have another question. And feel free to put your questions in the Q&A. Um, next question we have, um, how do you engage with your customers without becoming a nuisance? Maya, do you want to take that one? Yes, I got this one. Um, so there is a ton of opportunities for reaching out to your guests and I'm sure they're, they're getting a lot of, um, marketing from this restaurant and that restaurant. Um, but there are opportunities and first and foremost automated. So you can worry about your operations and running things on the floor without, 
you know, taking your time to go do this. Um, but it could be paced out. So there is an opportunity to do pace out at seven days, 30 days, 60 days, so on and so forth. And so what you're doing is you're re-engaging with your customers, um, but it's paced out at a time that they won't be seeing it every other day. Um, and so they'll get excited or maybe they don't know what they're getting for dinner and they see it, see the email there and boom, now they have dinner plans for them and their friends or significant others. Um, so there are opportunities for it to be paced out. And that way you get the point across without, uh, you know, giving too much of a nudge. Love that. And I think, yeah, I think, you know, staying, there's a difference between staying top of mind um, and reminding people that, that you're around as opposed to, you know, sending an email every six hours. <laughs> so, you know, I think, you know, finding, it's easy to find that balance where, you're not going to be, you know, you don't have to depend on foot traffic in order to have people remember that they want to order from you, but you don't have to, you know, spend a ton of money on a billboard in Times Square so that people know that you're around. Um, another question here, and this kind of goes along with what I just said. Um, so it said, what if you don't already do catering? Well, you know, like I said, thinking about catering, you know, if you have the ability to create larger orders, you know, you could do catering. So what, depending on what type of food you have, this can be, you know, individual sized meals, or this can be creating party platters. You can have a catering menu that is slightly different than what you're offering day to day. And maybe it's a time where you want to create something in volume, or you can just have your catering menu be something where, you know, if, if you're a taco place, you're doing a make your own taco bar, where you're almost giving the ingredients without putting them together or just putting, you know, 40 tacos in a box for, you know, 15 to 20 people. So anyone can be doing catering, even you. <laughs> I also think it's a good opportunity for some um, upcharges as well. Maybe you're doing a meal and as you want to add as an add-on, like a fruit stick at the end of the savory actual meal. Maybe at first glance, somebody will not be thinking about dessert and they're just getting the main meal, but it's a nice touch to add on. And it's a great way to kind of bring that check average up as well. Great. Um, any, any last questions? Great. Um, well, you know, what we, if you want to chat with us more, you know, feel free to visit getbento.com slash NYC Alliance, and you can learn more about navigating the holidays as well as get some more ideas about, you know, what you can do to help take advantage of this time of year. Great. Thank you guys so much. Um, thank you all for joining us. And as Caitlin mentioned, you know, we're here to support you. We're here to help during this um, extremely busy time where I know many of you are short staffed or, you know, still trying to navigate this difficult time. So if you have any questions or if you want to get connected to the Bento Box team, you can always reach out to us as well. We're at info at the NYC Alliance.org. And we are always happy to help. So Maya, Caitlin, the whole Bento Box team, thank you guys so much. I found this to be very interesting and very informative. And uh, we will also have a recording of this um, and we will be happy to share that. So I want to thank you all and enjoy the rest of your Monday. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.